What were you saying, John? The fantasy news must flow. How did... How did you make a f sound without lips? Don't ask questions and kill your family. No! Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today... I have a quick announcement to get into before we jump into the fantasy news. Pretty soon the Discord server, which I highly encourage you to join if you're of age, is going to be age-gated to be 16 plus. Not for any reason to post like actually explicit content, just due to the fact that having actual children within a Discord server where we're discussing adult books that have some pretty hefty themes can be somewhat problematic. And we've also had issues of just people's ages surprising people in certain ways. So we're going to have an age-gated 16. <gasps> again, not because we're posting adult explicit content that will still actually be banned, just because again, like we're discussing first law and Glockta and it can be weird to have someone be like 12 and be like what's this book about and you're like I <laughs> so again we're gonna have a 16 age gate put into place and yeah i recommend if you're of age check out the discord server because it's a wonderful place to discuss fantasy books and thank you again to the moderator team who has done an amazing job of keeping that place up and running and going i owe you all so much and that discord server would not exist without you but it's grown to the point where it's becoming like a we need some harsher rules but with that being said let's go ahead and jump into the fantasy news and of course the first First thing we need to talk about is the Wheel of Time poster that dropped. To the green screen! So we have the first poster. And it's a tantalizing one to say the least. Let's get into it. My, my wires are wrapped around. Perfect. So we had it confirmed through the meta text on the image. Yes, Wheel of Time fans are that nerdy and dug in. To confirm this is indeed their interpretation of a waygate. I understand why this isn't entirely book accurate, but I'm okay with it. It's gonna be something where it's probably like removes the leaf from the side and then it gets all whoa, 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 or so not like an actual gate opening. That might look weird. I don't know, but this isn't entirely book accurate. What I will say I'm most fascinated by though is this right down, are these weaves? They are color coded. We see blue, we see yellow, we see red. Is this what weaves are going to look like? Okay, let's focus on Moraine. Very more, this is the most I think we've seen Rosamund Pike look like Moraine in my mind. She is spot on in my image, uh, except for like, you know, obviously I pictured a slightly different face, but you know, her, this, is, this is damn moraine -y. And then we need to zoom back out to look at the cloud shapes because as we can see on their Twitter banner, this is a giant Aes Sedai symbol. Lots of people I've been seeing trying to spot what scene is this possibly from. I, I don't think, guys, this is not gonna be in the show. This is, this is a promo image like the Game of Thrones, Thrones things where you saw everyone in the throne. It's not actually something, this is not a shot I don't think will be in the show. One, be because it looks extraordinarily postery, and two, this doesn't look cinematography-wise the same that we've seen from like the brief land clip and stuff like that. This just looks different coloring, different everything, so pretty sure this is not going to be in the actual show. But that hints to me, it's probably the first in a series of character posters, potentially, and we could be getting these for like Moraine, Land, Perrin, Rand, Matt, Egwene, Nynaeve, Swan, I don't know, everyone. So I'm hoping that is indeed the case. But yes, this is the first promo image for the Wheel of Time. Are they weaves? And yes, I did feel the need to green screen it. And that's my prerogative. I also can't believe I forgot to say this, but yes, we also got a confirmed release date for November. So yes, November, there is going to be some Wadi times happening. I hate how I said that. And speaking of last minute fantasy news cut in, it is less than 30 minutes before fantasy news needs to go live and the official Wheel of Time new covers from Orbit have just been released. They look like this and I'm gonna wait till I see them in person to pass judgment. There's been too many times where book covers, I felt a certain way seeing them online, and then I see them in person and I love them or hate them when I just didn't feel that way originally. In fact, that copy of Eye of the World, I wasn't the biggest fan of till I saw it in person and I fell in love with the blue that they chose. So I'm gonna wait till I really get my hands up. And here's a last minute fantasy news insert. Let me know what you think of these new covers in the comments down below. A very nature documentary, that's for sure. 
Next news, Subterranean Press has announced they are going to be releasing A Twist of Fate by Kelly Armstrong. And with a bonus for everyone getting a digital copy upon release if you pre-order through Subterranean Press. And as I've made it well known to the channel, I like Subterranean Press quite a bit. I think they do good work, but I, what I will say here, um, maybe differentiate your F from your T a bit more because I cannot read this as A Twist of Fate and instead I read it as A Twist of Tate Fate. Tate fate. Fate. That's what my brain does every single time. Now, we also had a somewhat rocky launch for Amazon's upcoming New World, their highly anticipated fantasy MMORPG that a lot of people have been curious about. There's been reports of it just bricking and failing high-end graphics cards. Interestingly, this was not a huge problem, but did happen to quite a few players during a beta where thousands and thousands and thousands of players were playing the game. It's not been as bad as some headlines are making it sound, and Amazon did release a statement saying, Hundreds of thousands of players played the New World closed beta yesterday with millions of total hours played. We received a few reports of players using high-performance graphic card experiencing hardware failure when playing New World. New World makes standard DirectX calls as provided by the Windows API. We have seen no indication of widespread issues with 3090s either in beta or during many months of alpha testing. New World closed beta is safe to play. In order to further reassure players, we'll be implementing a patch today that caps frame rates on our screen with, okay, blah, 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 blah. Basically, they're saying it's an overblown issue. It's not that big a deal. And I'm sure the truth is somewhere within the middle. The only remark I will make at this point personally is that Amazon has been trying to get into the gaming sphere for so long. And I have yet to have a glowingly positive headline given to me about their involvement in the gaming industry. I I would like to. I think more competition in the gaming sphere right now at this point, especially with some of the recent headlines we've been seeing, is a good thing no matter what that competition is. Just whatever you're doing over there, do it, get good. I'm pretty sure like the people involved wouldn't even be upset by me saying this because they know they've had issues, like a lot of them. Let's just hope New World is finally a massive success. I will end this by saying it's pretty common for like big betas to catch issues that need to be fixed. That's the point of them. So I'm not going to be as harsh as I think some articles have been about this problem occurring. And let's just hope when the actual launch happens, there are no issues like this. But getting back into book release news, the Broken Binding has announced they will be doing a reprint of the Faithful in the Fallen series limited edition hardbacks that will be signed by the author. They have this beautiful beautiful fringing to them, and these look damn good. So I like to support the Broken Binding. They helped me with my book personally, just full disclosure, by ordering a bunch of copies with author prints. That was pretty neat. But yeah, this looks pretty cool. And if you're a fan of Faithful in the Fallen or it's in some limited editions, check out the link down below. You didn't think I wasn't gonna talk about Dune, right? Well, guess what? It's not been delayed again, not this time. In fact, we've reached a stage with the level of marketing and promotional stuff put out that I'm confident in saying Dune will not be delayed again, which means you will not receive another rap song by me about Dune's delay, which if you didn't see that fantasy news, this is quite confusing what I'm saying right now. But we did get another trailer, which I'm sure most of you have seen by now and looked. Oh, Denis Villeneuve, you're so you're such a good director. That was an accent. But we also got a release of one of the tracks for the movie's soundtrack, and it sounded pretty Hans Zimmer. <laughs> if you would like to listen to the full score, of course, link down below. It, it didn't absolutely blow me away. There's people saying like, it's the best piece, Hans Zimmer. I wouldn't say that, but I can't wait to see how it's incorporated into the film. Continuing with Dune, we're seeing headlines like, the Dune-verse is expanding. New books and comics coming to spice up Dune world ahead of upcoming film. Now, for those of you unaware, the Dune series is already quite contentious among fans. Many claim that after the first book, it never lived up to the Dune name again, while others do like Brian Herbert's additions to the series. But now having all these other forms of media, obviously going to be pumping content within the Dune-verse, riding the wave of the upcoming Denis Villeneuve movie, uh, it just, I, I don't, I don't want to sound like a snob. I don't want to sound like I'm a jerk, but is it needed? Do we need this? Is this requ I'm sure there are some Dune fans that are excited. Now, I'm excited for you, but I'm not thrilled immediately by the idea of just, now there's going to be Dune graphic novels, Dune video games, Dune, Dune. Daniel, 
just stop. I'll take care of this. You know, the thing is, I'm usually very excited for new content, for anything. But the thing about Dune is, there's already like 20 Dune books, and only six of them are Frank Herbert books. Honestly, I think that's enough. Any further Dune books at this point will only help to saturate the Dune franchise with what is essentially a bunch of filler material. I mean, Brian Herbert's last Dune book, Duke of Caladan, took place in between Dune and House Atreides, and essentially nothing happens in the book because you really can't make any bold changes or decisions because it's in between two books that already exist. So no, I don't need a bunch more prequels and in-between books. Keep doing the comics though, that's fine. Or at least that's what I got to say. All right, Daniel, here's your channel back. But keeping with the theme of just do we actually need this? Probably not. We also had a trailer drop for Blade Runner Black Lotus coming to Adult Swim. And I went into this lowering my expectations going, okay, it's gonna be for Adult Swim. It's not gonna live up to Blade Runner, but at least it'll attempt to capture the tone and the look of Blade Runner. And then I watched four seconds and just look at the dislike ratio. I. Wow. Not only does the animation look lazy and soulless, the soundtrack choice was completely off tone and theme for Blade Runner entirely, showing a misunderstanding of the world of Blade Runner. Can we stay on brand at least? Like I, there's branding and there's the purpose of stories. And if you're showing me in the trailer, you're not even hitting the tone. And I wanna say, I am totally okay with the idea of a female replicant trying to survive in the Blade Runner world. That's actually a pretty cool premise. It's purely the presentation here that I'm giving an F. The Blade Runner world and this idea even maybe deserves better than 2004 movie video game graphics. <sighs> but pulling back a little, I'll, tr I'll be positive. I'll be positive now, all right? We are also getting the live action adaptation of Invincible, which recently saw tremendous success with its animated debut. And what I can say is, I like that they're emphasizing they're taking a very different approach and this will not just be the animated show in live action. I appreciate that because it shows them trying to do something different and I hope it's as good as the animated show was. But I really think that story was done perfectly in the animated format and I don't see how the live action could possibly be better because that's a story that using the animation that reflected our own childhood cartoons was able to have an extra layer of commentary just in the way it was presented. Maybe maybe they'll, maybe they'll do it in a Marvel way where they like shoot it in a Marvel style and so that way it has a similar impact. I could see that working. I take back what I said. This could, this could be good. I'm. I'm holding out. We're gonna be positive. And we had a title and art style reveal for an upcoming Dragon Ball movie titled Dragon Ball Super, colon, Superhero. I know I've jokingly poked the DBZ fandom a lot, but you have to agree with me. That's a pretty terrible name. <laughs> and I'm just actually really curious about the pulse of the fandom at this point because I've heard more rumblings of like being discontent with the way power escalation is being handled within this universe and fans just not being as on board as they used to so give me your honest thoughts on this and on the wider DBZ franchise as a whole do you think this is something that should have been ended a few years back do you think there's a lot of gas still left in the tank here as an outsider I'm just very interested on what your thoughts as fans will be because I just am a giant nerd who has a fascination for the livelihood and breath within franchises. And it also looks like we are going to be getting a Pokemon live action show over at Netflix, which at first I kind of just dismissed. And honestly, my first thought was, wow, we're not getting a Pokemon streaming service. That's a relief because that's just genuinely the day and age we're in now. But what made me more curious is the fact that Joe Henderson is attached. Now, this guy actually has quite the interesting resume being involved with shows like White Collar, Lucifer, and recently 112263. So having this guy hooked in with a Pokemon show in the day and age when Netflix is trying to get IPs that will grab attention, especially with their stuff aimed towards kids, this could be something they invest in quite a bit. So if you're a Pokemon fan, keep an eye out because this isn't immediately looking bad. And the final story we're gonna cover here is about the developing situation going on with Blizzard, one of the biggest names in fantasy gaming. I do not feel comfortable in the time and research constraints I have on fantasy news, delving in deep on all the nuances and details 
details here. So if you would like a full, well-researched video that goes into what exactly is happening and why, which with things this serious, I think you should look into before speaking on the matter, I will instead link a video down below by Hazel Nutty Games, who did a sensational job of speaking on the matter and why it is so important and honestly a just systemic issue within the gaming industry. So please, if you are interested in this topic, go research, go check it out because I do not want to speak within my video here and the time constraints I have on a matter that is so serious and I just, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. So instead, I like to put my spotlight on someone else's voice who has already done a great job. But that has been this latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here and join the Discord server and post fantasy news stories you'd like to see covered as well. Have a good one, y'all. Peace! Need to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreon, Lower Jam. And just how low is that? <laughs>